Shortly before 9 o'clock this morning, a pair of men, shackled at the wrists, alighted from a prisoner van and was escorted to courtroom number 3, the Chamber of High Court Justice Ricardo O'Neill Sancroft. As they made their way toward the building adjacent to Battlefield Park, one of the inmates was greeted by his children before being frisked by a security guard on duty. Together, the men entered the empty courtroom where they were led to another section of the building that is reserved for jury deliberations. They were then uncuffed, left alone and made to wait for an hour before the proceedings began. In the case of 36-year-old Hildebrandt Codd, he was there to learn his fate as he stands accused of the murder of Densmore Bowman. During that time, Codd and Jesse Mejia, who was also in the jury room, saw an opportunity to liberate themselves from custody. Freed from their shackles, each man climbed through a window in the jury room and made good his escape, while we all sat in the courtroom waiting for the session to begin. Logged in remotely, Tiffany Cadle was also waiting for a verdict to be handed down in the murder case of her sibling. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I st I, I'm still trying to figure out how it happens. Honestly, I can't. Um, we were all here. I was here with my mom, my brother, everybody. We were here sitting down waiting. And then I get the text message and I'm like, that's, that's impossible. How, how, how could that have been? It was a daring escape from inside the high court. Upon learning what happened, at least two theories were shared with the sitting judge. It was believed that the men got away in a boat that was docked nearby. It was also theorized that they went in separate directions after climbing through the open window. Now he comes to court on the morning of the verdict and voila, he just escapes through a window, nowhere to be found. This is a, a frustrating situation for me, but even more so for people who work in the system and Yes, I'm a lawyer. I guess everybody knows that. And I have to speak as well because the prosecution, the Crown Council, Mr. Katuz, Mr. Reese Katuz was the Crown Council. He did everything. He put his all out in this case with me. And they have for a long time been advocating, asking for proper security, asking for things to be, things to change, things to be done differently at the court, at the high court level. These people aren't protected. Immediately following the flight, police officers from various branches of the department descended on the location. By then, however, the men were long gone. I shared with the responding officers this image that I captured of the duo when they arrived at court in order for the police to know exactly who they were looking for. Security was in place at the high court. This would not have happened. No, all of us have to be in fear of our lives because he knows he knows who we are. This gentleman has nothing to live for. He is a cruel human being. He is a heartless individual. This gentleman, the way he murdered my brother, he has no soul. There was nothing. There is nothing in him. And he have no reason to not want to harm me or harm members of my family or even harm harm members from the from the prosecution. If he should get the chance to do so, there is nothing to stop him. Jesse Mejia has been captured by police in Belize City. Cod remains on the run. Cadle appeals to anyone who sees Hildebrandt Cod to contact the authorities immediately. I am pleading every single person that if they see him, if they know where he is, to please let the police department know so that we can recapture this individual. He knows he was going to jail. He knows he was going to get sentenced today. And that's the reason why he run. That's the reason why he run. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Cayetano.